one. one. Yeah. In Sydney, Australia, we are at 34 degrees south latitude, which is the opposite side of the world from Huntsville, Alabama. So, which way did the toilets flush? That is the question. Here in Huntsville, Alabama, we're at 34 degrees north latitude. And we're gonna find out if the water swirls the opposite way here to how it does in the southern hemisphere. We're making the definitive video to settle this once and for all. It's never been done on the internet. You're gonna learn something. The Simpsons did a whole episode based on toilets flushing the opposite direction in Australia. Plus, other shows have supposedly demonstrated this effect. So I have seen documentaries that seem to indicate that which hemisphere you're in determines which way the water is going to swirl. But there's this other group of people, and they seem really confident that it doesn't matter where you're at, the water is going to swirl however it wants. So is this a real effect or not? The application of this principle to draining water in Earth's two hemispheres is just bunk. But have you ever just looked for yourself and figured out which way your toilet swirls? If you try it yourself, you'll find inconsistent results. Here in Alabama, I've noticed that some turn counterclockwise and some go clockwise. This sink sometimes drains one way and sometimes the other way. You see, most toilets have little jets in it, so the swirl direction is determined by the design of the toilet and not which hemisphere you're in. In any container of water, there's always going to be some rotation. The water is not perfectly still. And it is this, rather than the hemisphere, that determines which way the water will swirl down the drain. So it's a myth. Crossing the equator does not mean the toilet's going to change directions. But what if we come into the garage and do a more controlled experiment? But what if we could eliminate all motion from the water? This is a one and a half meter kiddie pool. I have here a five foot wide kiddie pool. Instead of filling the pool with no vorticity at all, I'm going against the way it's supposed to drain. So I'm trying to fill it with the flow going clockwise. I actually filled the pool in the anti-clockwise direction to be sure that any clockwise motion we see is not due to the way I filled the pool. So let's let the water settle for a complete day so that we know that it's perfectly still. And I've left this water sitting here for 24 hours. So it seems like I've damped all of the motions from the filling. Well, I'm not going to reach in and pull a plug out because that would induce some vorticity. I'm going to use this valve that I have connected to the bottom of the pool. I really hope this works. Destin, wish me luck. Good luck, Derek. I'm about to pull the plug. Okay, opening the valve in three, three two, two, one. one. Water should be flowing. And the pool is draining. But you can't see any motion of the water just yet. Okay, water's been flowing for a couple of minutes and I haven't seen anything yet, so we're gonna put some dye in it. To help us see where the water's flowing, I'm gonna put some food coloring in on the four cardinal directions around the pool. Check it out, it's like a tornado, like right off the bat. We got a counterclockwise rotation. We filled it up clockwise and now it's going counterclockwise. You can clearly see that the water is flowing clockwise in this direction and that makes sense because that's how it should flow in the southern hemisphere due to the Earth's rotation. We have a kiddie pool in my garage and the whole Earth is rotating and the water's going counterclockwise because I'm in the northern hemisphere. It's real. This is real. But you can see what a tiny little effect it is and what extraordinary lengths I had to go to to see this effect. So really, you're not going to see it in a bathtub and you're not going to see it in a sink or in a toilet because there are other sources of angular momentum that totally wash out this effect. We just proved it because we just eliminated variables. The Coriolis, Coriolis effect, effect is there real. There you have it. It works. To understand how it works, imagine a pool with one edge touching the South Pole. Think about a pool near the North Pole. The pool is stationary relative to Earth, but every day it's actually completing one full revolution. The Earth is spinning on its axis, so the pool spins around the pole once a day. Now you can see the side of the pool furthest from the pole travels much farther every day than the side right next to the pole. The whole pool is moving, but the part that's closest to the equator has more momentum and the part that's closest to the pole has less. So the outer side of the pool is moving fastest towards the east, and as you get closer to the pole, the velocity decreases down to zero. Think about these velocities relative to the drain in the middle. Now, imagine we drain the pool. When we pull the plug, all the water starts moving towards the middle. Water from the far side is moving too fast relative to the drain, and so it gets out ahead whereas water from near the pole is going too slow, and so it lags behind. 
The side nearest the equator is going faster, so that water outruns the drain. But the water nearest the pole is going slower, so it falls behind. So, so when, when the, the water, water approaches, approaches the drain, drain it, it swirls, swirls counterclockwise. This is the reason hurricanes swirl counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. And this is the reason cyclones swirl clockwise in the southern hemisphere. The center of the hurricane has lower pressure, just like a drain. So the hurricane swirls just like our pool. The higher pressure air rushes into the eye of the storm, and just like in our pool, swirls in the direction dictated by the hemisphere. And, and that's, that's the, the truth, truth about, about toilet, toilet swirl. swirl. That was awesome. What'd you think? I definitely learned something. And if you did too, then you should share these videos with your friends. It's the first internet experiment from two different locations. Pretty cool stuff. So, so you, you should subscribe to this guy. Nope. Subscribe to Destin. Subscribe to Derek. I'm gonna actually go to his channel and make sure that you end up over there. Let's go, let's go to Veritasium and Veda and subscribe it. Okay. There we go. Yep. Yep, you're here. Oh, hey, these are some of my subscribers. I am so glad to see you here. While you're here, subscribe to Destin's channel. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna subscribe to Veritasium and Mass because it's an awesome channel. This is a good looking channel. I like your logo. That's <laughs> I, I like what you got going on over here. Oh, it's, oh look! Where's the subscribe button?